All right, here we go. This is the what, Kumon power meter. Real quick. Here we go. Kumon power meter. And um, it's just a really simple one, but it's nice because um, I just mess around here for at least 17 minutes and 10 seconds. But uh, you move the function around. This shows like how many watts or, you know, volts are available. And this actually shows what's currently going on right now. I have a fan that's connected to it that's not on right now. So it has like the low and the high wattage that it, it was using previously, I think. I'm not sure. I'm still learning about all the electrical stuff. But what I wanted to know was to be able to know how much draw my electric heaters were doing. And uh, so that you can put in here. You can put in like the cost for the kilowatt hour. If you check with your local power company, they can let you know. Um, or, you know, use, use online what they charge. And I think they charge differently per during the days even. so. But you're able to put in like how much it costs per kilowatt hour. And then they can calculate how much it's going to cost. But simply though, what I was looking for was right here. So watch this. I'm going to turn on. That's using up uh, 20 amps. I'm not sure what all the numbers mean there, but you notice how this this was 17, 15 just a minute ago. But then it's uh, showing how much time it's actually been putting out, how much time it's actually been connected and running stuff. So, you know, that way you can, later on, you can put on your heat or something like that, run it for like an hour or two, run it all night, get up in the morning, find out how much that cost you that night. That's... A good thing to know, even though it's a painful thing to know, is a good thing to know because then you can find out where you might want to clip certain uh, energy vacuums. So, yeah, so if I had, yeah, so if I had kilowatt hours, you know, it's five kilowatt hours, if I had the price in there, I don't know how much that cost me, but that depends on your local local company so anyway um it's really cool i actually like it um it's only one thing that i would recommend actually is getting the this one is the one with the not backlit one which is a regular one those single single port um no backlight but they gave it to me to review so i can't complain got it for free but uh Anyway, if you get it, though, I think you should get the backlight one. It's a lot easier because right now I have to use the light from the camera to be able to see it. But then if it's off, then I have to, you know, you got to use a flashlight to see it. So it would be more convenient if it had, or if you could turn the backlight on and off it, if it had a backlight. This one doesn't. But um, but it's it's what I'm looking for. That's just a simple way to check, see what's going on. Oh, yeah, let me show you this, too. So... Now set the 20 amps. Turn off. Slowing down. All right. Now we'll turn to the other speed. So it goes from 20 amps to 27. This is the higher, higher speed on it. So it does make a difference. You know, like 7 amps, 6.5 amps average. Now then watch. See, as soon as I turn off. Watch how the clock stops. And we're done. Yeah. So, it, at least something like this is really, really, really helpful. I do recommend getting this one even. It's really simple. Uh, the first little bit takes a while for the, this battery on the inside. It takes a while to charge, so it kind of acts a little sketchy at first. But then, uh, once it's been plugged in for like 15 minutes, it seems to fill up whatever internal battery it has. It's a lot better readings. Before, this would like pause. I had to reset it a few times, but until I just left it in, then it worked fine. But yeah, um, I like it. Thumbs up. Just remember to get the backlight version instead. So, anyway, that's my recommendation.